Alright guys, we're heading to an overtime call here. Supposedly the cooler's getting too cold. They claim it's under warranty, so let's go take a look and see what's going on, even though the equipment was all provided and uh, we just provided the labor. So let's go take a look and see if there's anything that uh, was done wrong or if there's something wrong with the equipment or if it's user error. Alright, so we got some alarms. I've never seen this thing before. Not sure, hit the center button, low superheat. Smooth alarm. Enter a pin, that's great. Never seen that before. That's wonderful. So what exactly is the reason? He said it's freezing things in here, which you can see this is a small little cooler. I've never seen one this small. They say it's freezing things, which we've got uncovered produce right here. Let's see what we got here. I don't know how this thing even works. Monitor. Okay, hit enter. So it looks like, go back, box set point 35 degrees, but you can't change it because it's got a code on it, I think, is what the deal is. Read only. Coil looks like it's clean. I can't see it from here, but it appears that it looks like it's fine. Superheat, I don't think I can adjust that. Superheat set for 12 degrees. It's running a 1.5, negative 1.5. That probably ain't good. Low superheat, no kidding. Defrost settings. Execute. Air, it's time. Number defrost two. Defrost schedule 2 a.m. 12 p.m. That sounds about normal. So we're up here on the roof. First thing I notice, it's a little odd, is we have a defrost clock in here. And that controller downstairs has a defrost system built into it. So I put it in defrost and we're not pumping down. I'm kind of half wondering here, do we have it wired for this? It was an option, we unhooked it. I don't know. It's been working since November kind of half tempted to unhook the contact here and see if it shuts down, which would be nice if it wasn't so crammed full of crap in here. That's number four, brown. Let's see if we can figure out where this goes to. Red or L12, there's a 14. That's not even, that ain't even the same colors or numbers they've got there, because that's a 70 and a 67. I don't see neither one of those things there. Yeah, you can tell nothing's happening because look, we got two power wires and a ground going downstairs. That's the only communications we got going on. So there's no no communications up here at all. The pressure switch is probably just a generic little pressure switch, which I got it right there. It's just a little cheap screw-on style. So that blue one comes in to here, and it does break one of the leads on it so that's that's the pressure switch it shuts it down so inside it's going to pump it down this you know it's going to valve it off at the uh, electronic expansion valve and it's going to pump down then shut off this here i'm not sure why well let's look at it four goes to four it's not even hooked up um yeah that's just the power so this this switch this thing's not even being used at all so we can ignore that so everything's going to be downstairs just like i figured so what I did is I pulled the wire off the contactor very gently, not to bu uh, bump it or anything, and it did shut off. So we're going to go ahead and put that back on. I just wanted to make sure that the contactor wasn't sticking, so we've eliminated that. One little trick you can do on that, um, you can push the contactor in and then put the line on there at the same time. One electrician buddies showed me that way before I got in the field. And that keeps you from chattering the contactor. Um, of course, you know it's not really safe, but just so you know. Of course, we'd never do that in the field, so just want to make sure to throw that out there, but I went ahead and just unhooked these wires. Okay, everything's tight. So everything's being controlled from down below. There's really nothing up here at all. Now, one of the other things I wanted, to be ver uh, wanted to verify here was whether the sight glass was full. They did start it in November. And sometimes you can, you know, have issues if you don't have it added for winter charge, which, like I said, it's lasted all winter and just now having issues with it supposedly freezing. I think we got an issue in our controls. It's set for 35, 
Superheat set for 12. I mean, everything's pretty above board. Looks like somebody tripped over the line set here and bent this. That's really nice. All right, so I entered the code that they showed me on the factory thing. That didn't work, so I entered the one one of the guys told me. Right now, it entered it, or it's trying to enter the, the execute mode. I'm hitting the center button, hitting it once. Tried holding it, tried hitting the home button. I think the control's jacked up or the freaking uh, expansion device ain't letting it pump down is what I think's going on. Box temperature 42, in service mode. Force defrost in service, flash two. Active alarms, too few defrost. So let's fix that then. Snooze the alarm. Sure, whatever. Snooze all alarms, okay. Let's go in alarm history. Low superheat. June 17th, oh, that's not accurate because we're in, uh, well, I guess it is. Today is June 17th. Low superheat's happening over and over. Look at that, look at that. Six o'clock p.m. Just going back, 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 back. Lots of that. Okay, the differential set for two degrees. Expert pin. Well, let me go in here. So expert pin don't work. So let's get out of there. So the EXV stepper position is zero out of 255. I can hear the refrigerant running. So it's not pumping down. You can see possibly. No, it's not freezing up yet. But you can. Yeah, that's. Can you play with that? Nope, it doesn't do anything. So back up one, general settings, 12 hour, it's fine. United States, Eastern, Daylight Savings, date, yep, 12, 17, yep, that's about right. Fahrenheit, PSIG, basic pin. Ah, look at that, basic pin, expert pin. We're popping this cover off. I can hear it leaking by. Um, it's not real bad. Let's see if we can uh, see if we can see a little better now. There's the suction tr transducer there. She looks like that's hooked up to there. Which it's right there. It's in there tight. Um, fan, nothing special there on that. I did switch it to four defrost. Should not need that. I think our problem is just that the uh, this stupid thing is uh, not pumping down. You look at that. You got box A1, suction temp there, coil temp. There's supposed to be a coil temp sensor somewhere. I wonder where that's at because I'm not seeing it around back. I love learning about this stuff at seven o'clock at night. It's the best time to learn, you know. So you've got your air sensor there, but the coil sensor must be. I wonder if they're doing it like some of their other stuff. I wonder if they're throwing it in there in the in the fans, in behind the fan somewhere, I bet you. Not seeing any wires. Yeah. Yeah, I mean if I Yeah, the coil's cold. So that's what's happening. That's leaking refrigerant through. It's getting super flipping cold, making this thing sweat like crazy, which then makes the dripping going on, and uh, that's what's going on. So it's, it's got some issues, obviously. The stepper motor must be garbage, because it's saying, like I said, that it was at the, at the zero point, so that's your issue. Um, huh, not much I can do with it tonight, guys. Not much I can do at all. All right, got thinking about something. If this thing's not paying attention to the suction pressure, or if it thinks that that's truly a zero, which is not telling me what it is, but you can calibrate it here. Let's see if we can read what our actual monitor box temp set point. I wish it would tell me. Whoosh. I wish. I wish. I wish. I wish it would tell me where that thing is at. Yep. There it is. Suction pressure. It knows it's 71 pounds. That's about what I had on my suction gauge. So there we go. It's reading that right. 
Yep, that's that's the problem. I wonder if by chance if we killed the power, if it would maybe run the valve from one way down to the other way. You would think it wouldn't shut the fans off if um, if it really was or wasn't in a defrost. I just found test mode, defrost relay on, which just don't have heaters. But I can hear that refrigerant cycling through. They're just shut off. You can hear the clicking. Fan on. It's a neat control. I really like it. You could hear that freaking uh, valve doing its jiggity jiggity and liquid solenoid relay on. Yeah, it'd be nice if it had a liquid solenoid. <laughs> this would be working. EXV fully closed. Yep, I'm gonna stand by what I said. It's getting, it's 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 doing different things, but uh, I think it's got to be that valve. Okay, so 31. 99 little burger. It wouldn't come out of that stupid test mode. I tried the star, tried the home, tried the back. I just don't have all the information for that manual. So we're back to monitoring mode. Alarms. What are we doing on alarms? Zero alarms. I like that. The reason why it's low superheat because the stupid thing's never shutting off. Like I said, this stupid thing is still leaking through. It, that doggone EXV is our problem. It says zero and it's not. So. I'm going to stick by what I said. Got to get a model number off this thing. Alright, so I had to get out of the service mode. So, box temp set point. Differential's 2 degrees. Preload time, 0 minutes. Minimum on, minimum off. So, everything's good to go. Yeah, we're just going to have to get out of here and call it a day. Unfortunately. So, they're, they're just going to have to deal with it until we get the new... Uh... Alright guys, it's going to wrap this one up. If you liked it, Got me some slack, my first one I've seen. So I've, I've worked on the um, Beacon 2, and this is pretty much the same thing, just a little bit fancier. So it's the first one, I know what to look for now. I know what my passwords are. Um, there's a basic and then there's an expert. So there's two different ones. And let's, I noticed expert doesn't seem to let you go into the basic. So other than that, guys, if you enjoyed the video, you want to see more like it, hit the thumbs button. Don't forget to subscribe. We'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching. I gotta admit, guys, this food is really, really good. These little shell things, I mean, I'm, I've never seen them this small before. It's kind of small, but they really did a nice presentation with things. I've kind of already destroyed everything, but this is one of the benefits of being on call, and, you know, you try to do them a good job and uh, get hooked up with some good food. So, so anyhow, catch you guys on the next one.